Welcome back to Family Health Today. I'm Dr. Jeanette Nishwat. As we stated earlier in the show, skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the United States. And with almost one million new diagnosed cases each year, it's estimated that 40% of Americans will develop skin cancer at least once by the time that they reach age 65. But why is skin cancer on the rise, and what can be done to prevent it? Well, joining us now to discuss these questions is dermatologist Dr. Wendell Weed. Welcome to the show, Dr. Weed. Thank you, doctor. It's nice to be here. All right. Melanoma is such a common skin <clears throat> cancer, and it's such right. a common cause of death. Why is that? Well, I think, uh, you know, we have to realize that our, our lifestyle today, our modern lifestyle with uh, sun exposure, we enjoy doing outdoor mm -hmm. activities. Uh, we're not always good about protecting ourselves from sun, uh, from sun damage, and our aging population all contributes to the dramatic rise we've seen in malignant melanoma in the last 25 to 50 years. How can a sunburn during the childhood years uh, cause uh, cancers later in life? Well, that's not quite fully understood, mm -hmm. but we do know that when you get a sunburn, when you, when you get sun exposure, damage is done to the to the DNA of your cells. And your body has a mechanism to repair that DNA, but that repair mechanism is not 100% efficient. So some of those damaged DNA strands escape repair. And as that damage builds up over your lifetime, some of the key genes mm -hmm. that are important in controlling cell growth and cell maturation are damaged. And when those, those DNA fragments are damaged, you, you end up with uncontrolled growth, which we call a malignancy. I see. What is the most common type of skin cancer here in the United States? The most common type of skin cancer is called basal cell carcinoma. Mm -hmm. And there are about three, three million cases of basal cell carcinoma a year in the United States. And, and I would caution our audience in, in that any of these statistics that you and I throw out here mm -hmm. today, that you can bet there's a lot of underreporting going on because those, those estimates of basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma mm -hmm. or melanoma all depend on physicians accurately reporting those diagnoses. And I can, I can just tell you, there's a lot of underreporting that goes on. From your experience, how many people are actually affected by skin cancers in the United States, Dr. Weed? Well, like I say, yeah. th three million people will be diagnosed this year with, with melanoma, or with, excuse me, with basal cell carcinoma. There'll be about roughly about a million people with squamous cell carcinoma diagnosed this year. And there'll be about, depending on where you get your statistics, 100,000 to 120,000 cases of melanoma diagnosed this year. So add it all up and you're, you're approaching four to five million people a year. Large numbers, very dangerous. Yes. And all three can be uh, deadly, is that correct? They all have the potential to be, but, but let's get down to brass tacks. The mm -hmm. one that's really dangerous is malignant melanoma. If you, have a, if you have a malignant melanoma and you let it go to a certain, uh, you know, to a certain point before you get to the doctor, if it spreads beyond the skin, your survival rate goes down to 50%, 15% over a five-year period. If you get to the doctor early when those changes first occur and the melanoma is still limited to the surface of the skin and the melanoma is removed, your survival rate is basically 99 to 100%. Basal cell carcinomas, very unlikely to, to be uh, deadly. Most of the time they are locally destructive. They can be very disfiguring, so they need to be taken care of. Squamous cell carcinomas are the one that's kind of in between. On an immunologically intact person, in other words, somebody who hasn't, doesn't have some sort of immune system defect or, may, or they haven't had a, an organ transplant, they're not on the immunosuppressive drugs. Uh, if your immune system is intact, then squamous cell carcinomas, particularly when they arise on sun-exposed skin, behave a lot like basal cell carcinomas. Locally destructive, and invasive, but don't have a great malignant potential. How many people die each year from skin cancer, Dr. Weed? There's, it, it, d d d there again, it depends mm -hmm. on where you're getting your statistics, but the, it's said that about one person an hour wow. dies from malignant melanoma. And that's gonna be where most of the deaths from skin cancer occur. So that's between seven to 8,000 people a year die from malignant melanoma. And who 
who are at risk? What are the risk factors for cancer? Well, basically all of us are at mm -hmm. risk for skin cancer. Mm -hmm. If you have a fair complexion, if, if, if a fair complexion, if you're a blue-eyed blonde, blue-eyed redhead, you're at greater risk than than say somebody who has a much darker complexion, a brown-eyed brunette, mm -hmm. or a, a, a black person, an Afro African American. Uh, Hispanics have a slightly decreased risk of skin cancer compared to Caucasians. So basically, the lighter your complexion, the greater your risk. Also, if you have a family history of skin cancer, whether it's malignant melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, if you have that family history, that also increases your risk. If you have more than 100 moles, that increases your risk. The average 30-year-old Caucasian has 30 to 50 moles on their body, so if you have more than 100, Mm -hmm. that alone increases your risk. And certainly if you've ever sure. had a skin cancer. So it's not just sunbathing that causes skin, skin cancers. There's a genetic component and an environmental component as well. Right. There's genetic components, environmental components. If you have a birthmark, uh, we know that birth con congenital nevi, mm -hmm. birthmarks, uh, have an increased risk sure. for melanoma. And that risk is directly related to how large they are. The larger the congenital nevus birthmark, mm -hmm the greater your risk. Very interesting. And you know, I understand that some sun exposure is actually good for you and we need it. Our body needs it. Well, that's been kind of a controversial topic mm -hmm. over the last few years. You know, as dermatologists, we are we're cautious about encouraging any kind of sun exposure, although absolutely we do need some of the results of mm -hmm. sun exposure like vitamin D. We need to be getting our vitamin D from somewhere, whether it's uh, cautious sun exposure, but we would prefer you get it from diet and dietary supplements. I see. Uh, Dr. Weed, melanoma, for example, how is it diagnosed? Or any type of skin cancer, right. for that matter? The, the first thing in diagnosis of skin cancer is suspicion. Mm -hmm. The patient needs to be aware of their skin, self-examination. If they see something that they're not sure about, they go see their physician. They either come see their family practice physician, their internist, their dermatologist get the lesion checked. If it's suspicious at all, we take a we either take a biopsy or we remove right. the lesion right there and submit it for pathology. And if it does uh, unfortunately come back positive, what are some of the treatment options available to those who have been diagnosed? The primary treatment for most skin cancers is going to be excision or surgical removal of the skin cancer. And for probably, you know, most basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas, that's going to be all that's going to be required. And then, of course, careful monitoring, not only for recurrence of the lesion that was removed, mm -hmm. but also we know that you, if you've had one, there's a good chance you're going to have another one. So we monitor you for several years after that. Melanoma is a little bit different. What we do for melanoma depends on what stage it's mm -hmm. at at the time of diagnosis. If it's limited to the surface, superficial layers of the skin, Wider excision should give us that 99 to 100 percent cure rate. If it shows any signs that it has advanced past the superficial layers of the skin into a little bit deeper depth where mm -hmm. it may have had a chance to get into blood vessels or lymph nodes, then we're going to be more interested in checking maybe some lymph nodes, maybe doing some scans to see if there's any evidence of disease outside the primary site. What is the best way to prevent skin cancer, Dr. Weed? Well, stay out of the sun, live in the basement. And uh, if you have to be out in the sun, use if some you sunblock? Have to, of course. If you, of course, I'm joking about <laughs> sure, that. Sure, sure. <laughs> if you have to be out in the sun, absolutely. Use some sunblock. Uh, you know, most of us would recommend 30 or higher. I say the bigger the number, the better. The mm -hmm. other thing is try to moderate your activity so you're out of that 10 to 2 p.m. sun mm -hmm. exposure. That's the most intense time of sun exposure. And also, the things that you can keep covered up with clothing, keep them covered up with clothing. But remember that not all clothing is equal as far as sun protection. Sure. What are some signs that people can look for? For example, if they notice that they have a mole maybe that's changing, what should they look for that's easy to prompt them to go see their doctor right away? Right. It's a very easy thing to remember. We remember them by A, B, C, D, and E. A stands for asymmetry. If you can draw a line through that mole and each half looks the same, mm -hmm. then, it's, then that's a good sign. If one half looks different than the other, it's a, it's a sign of concern. Border, if it's got a nice, smooth, sharp, regular border, that's good. If it's an irregular coast of Maine border, we don't like that. Color, we like nice tan brown color. We don't like mm -hmm. red, white, blue, or black. Uh, 
D stands for diameter. If it's smaller than a pencil eraser, that's a good sign. If it's bigger than a pencil eraser, that's another concern. And then the last one, E, is probably the most important in my mind, and that is evolution. If a, if, if a mole mm -hmm. is changing, that's more important than the rest of those features to me. If you tell me that that uh, mole that's a pencil eraser size now was a pinhead mm -hmm. six months ago, I'm still, I'm going to be very concerned about it. It may, fit, it may fit all the rest of those criteria, but that evolution worries me. What about the prognosis of skin cancer in general, Dr. Weed, from your experience? You catch it early, better prognosis? Absolutely. But... Absolutely. The, 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 pro, the prognosis of skin cancer is directly related to how soon it's caught and evaluated and treated. And there's nothing easier to cure than an early diagnosis of skin cancer. Right. But there's nothing harder to cure than skin cancer that's gotten past the skin. Where can one go to get some more information about skin cancer in general? Probably some of the best the best sites are on the web. Mm -hmm. the, you know, you can go to the website of the American Academy of Dermatology, you can go to the Mayo Clinic's website, and you can go to the National Cancer Institute's website. There are also websites directly uh, that deal with each individual diagnosis, melanoma, basal cell, squamous cell carcinoma. All right, very good. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Weed, for it's sharing this valuable information with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned, Family Health. Today we'll return in just a moment.